In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's play fill in the blank. For God so blanked the world that he gave his only Son. Yes, for God so loved the world. Actually, so agaped the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him would have eternal life, not perish, but have eternal life. We will get back to this blank word, love, agape, and how Jesus literally filled in the blank with his life. But before we get to that, I want to call to our attention the great power of this little game of filling in the blanks. If you hang around kids for a while, you will find that filling in the blank seems to be at the heart of every puzzle and game they play, and it's also very key to how they learn and how we learn as adults. Here's a little information for you to start, but the rest is hidden. You have to fill in the rest. For example, uh, kids love to play hangman, mind you. Give them all the blanks, they fill them in by guessing in the right letters. Adults love Wheel of Fortune, right? Seven o'clock, all right. Veda gives you all the blanks and players fill them in by guessing the right letters. Now add to these crossword puzzles and Sudoku and Wordle and dozens more like them, you're given a little information that you know, but most of it's hidden. And it seems we are very engaged and learn best when we start with these hints of a little and then fill in the blanks to gradually reveal all that we don't yet know. And I believe this is no accident that this is so engaging and so ubiquitous because filling in the blanks actually re resembles a lot about life itself. Right in this world, we're given some hints about who we are, where we came from, and what our purpose is, but most of this is hidden from view. It's wrapped up in mystery. And a life well lived, I believe, is filling in the blanks in the course of our lives, sometimes in joy, sometimes in sorrow, until who we are and where we came from and what we're for is revealed to us and to all those whom we love well. And it's also no accident that this mysterious game runs all the way to the top. God seems to have baked it into creation. God sets up all of his creation with a few clues about who God is, what is most good and who we're called, who we're called to be, but he also leaves so much hidden. And he invites us as children in the course of our lives to learn and to strive and to grow, to fill in these blanks. It's all through scripture. God accomplishes the work of creation in six days, six ages, but he rests on the seventh and he opens it up to us humans to fill in the blanks, to carry forward creation in history. God calls a certain people. He gives them 10 commandments, but then allows them to fill in the blanks with five full books, the Torah, on how to live a blessed and moral life. And finally, God sends prophet after prophet speaking cryptic words about the arrival of a Messiah, an anointed one, until Jesus comes to help us fill in the blanks, right the wrongs of a world which has fallen into sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. This is God's great fill in the blank in one verse. God created the world and you and I for a purpose, for good ends, and he left it to us you and I, to fill in the blanks. But what has become clear over all the years of human history, a trial and stumbling, is that we're, we're too weak to find our answers without help, without hints, without the word and example of Jesus always before us. Without him, the way is too hard, and we are too weak. But with him, we fill in some important blanks. In the beginning of this sermon, you filled in the blank with the word love, for God so loved the world, and I said it was literally blank before the time of Jesus, and here's what I meant. 
There were several words for love in the Greek language before the times of Jesus, but only after witnessing his totally unique life did the word agape emerge, love, to describe this love like no other which was self-giving, which was other-centered, which was patient, which was kind, which was long-suffering, that Jesus embodied like no one ever before. For God so loved, agape, the world that he gave his only son. And Jesus literally filled in a blank, a chasm in the world's understanding of love and practice of love. And if we're to live our lives to the fullest potential, we too must fill in our blanks. So let's keep at this challenging and joyful puzzle because by working at it, we grow stronger and better in love and in life. And we're not just to love our friends, family, and those like us, but we're supposed to love those not like us and even those against us. And we're not just to love our own when they're lovable, but we're supposed to love them when they're unlovable. And we're not just to love for as long as it works for us, but as Jesus, we're supposed to love until the very end. Jesus' life and his unprecedented love filled in the final blanks of what God's purpose was for this world and these people he created, and to raise up children of the earth to become children of heaven. Jesus gave his word and his example to guide us, and now we must fill in the blanks in our own lives so that the agape love of Christ be revealed in this life and show us forth unto the next, now and always, and unto the ages of ages. Amen.